Макс Джонс, он. Да, каже, зрозуміло. Для, звісно, за такої ситуації зрозуміло. Угу. Тому ми виїхали е, двома машинами, і ми з собою ще взяли наших сусідів, о, онука і доньку, для того, щоб вивезти в безпечну зону. А вона на те місце сказала, що буде доглядати за моєю мамою, приглядати. Е, вона – це сусідка, так? Сусідка, так. Ми сусідки забрали mm-hmm. о, о, дочку, онука, а вона mm-hmm. прийшла до мами в погріб. So we, не було куди сховатися. So we decided to go uh, uh, with uh, our neighbors. We took the daughter and the children of uh, the neighbors, but the lady the neighbor, she said I will come to your house and I will spend time in the cell along with your mother. Just take my kids to the safe place. So they took two cars, two families and they started driving to the west. Ми виїхали двома машинами. Ми в чому стояли, так запригнули, тільки прихватили з собою документи. So, а, і то не всі ми, ну, ми були настільки роз... не знали, що нам робити. So, uh, ми побігли і поїхали. We didn't have the chance even to get packed and uh, what we were wearing on at that moment. Uh, we uh, took the papers, the documents which we remembered, but not all that is necessary, that were necessary. And uh, we get, got going, we went to, we started driving. І вже пізно вночі ми приїхали в інший район Черні, Чернігівської області, це Ічнянський район, де живе мого чоловіка двоюрідний брат. It took us uh, until the dark uh, to drive to the edge of the oblast, not to the other oblast. It was still Chernihiv oblast, but this is the Ichnyatsky uh, region uh, where they, uh, the, uh, her brother lives, and they stopped there for the night. Ми думали, що там ми побудемо день, два, три і повернемось додому. We were hoping to spend there about a couple of days and then return back home. Звісно, що ми всю ніч не спали, а коли ще ми отримали інформацію, що біля 6-ї години ранку вже російські танки зайшли туди, то ми стрибнули в одну машину, тому що Аня, моя невістка, не спала всю ніч, вони були психічні розлади, вона не змогла управляти автомобілем, тому ми сіли вже в один автомобіль і продовжили дорогу. So, uh, in, in, they, they didn't sleep at night. They came and of course this, uh, this uh, uh, stress uh, it didn't allow to sleep. And at 6 a.m. they heard that the Russian tanks are already in this village where they spent the night. So uh, the, the, her daughter didn't have, uh, first of all she was tired, secondly she had nerves uh, uh, shock and uh, she couldn't continue driving so they sit into they got into one car and uh, started escaping ми їхали не знаючи куди але ми розуміли що треба їхати на західну Україну поближче до кордону тому що ми не знали яка буде ситуація це було повномасштабний наступ ми знали що з усіх сторін за російської білоруської границі Наступає на нас вор, на наш ворог, на нас. Uh, we understood by that time that the uh, enemy is coming from the all, from all the sides, from Belarus, from Russian borders. We didn't have the location where to go in uh, in the western Ukraine. We were just driving to the west, closer to the uh, border with the European Union. Це були страшні корки, де ми один кілометр могли проїхати за 6 годин, так? Yeah. Один десь кілометр – 6 годин, але вже ми бачили по дорозі розбиті, розбомблені фури, розбомблені е, заправки. Mm-hmm. І над нами летіли винищувачі, yeah. ми не розуміли, які гради, і ми не розуміли взагалі, що буде з нами далі. The, it was a terrible driving, because uh, the speed of driving was like one kilometer within six hours. There were a lot of cars trying to escape. On the road they were seeing the uh, bombed, the uh, destroyed trucks on the sides, destroyed gas stations. Uh, the missiles were flying over our head. We didn't, didn't know uh, when the next missile will hit our car or neighbor car going in front of us or behind. Знаєте, це був випадок, коли ми їхали, коли куди бачили очі. 
this is the uh, how the ukrainian uh, saying goes we are driving where we can see just where our eyes can see with no uh, actual uh, destination point Спочатку ми приїхали у місто Хмельницький, нам там волонтерські надали волонтерську допомогу, нам е, дали одяг, дали е, їжі, е, дали прихисток на декілька днів, але нам треба було розуміти, ми вже зрозуміли тоді, що це не на один, два, три дні, нам треба шукати десь житло. Угу. Хмельницький, це я так розумію, ось це, ця область Хмельницька, так? ні, це Вінницька, перепрошую, ось це Хмельницька, так? Mm-hmm, да. So they were driving from here through the uh, uh, over here, and this when they came to this oblast, this is Khmelnytsk oblast. They had their uh, first uh, asylum uh, where they've been treated as refugees. They got a place to uh, stay overnight and um, have and some food. Нам там надали житло на декілька днів, але ми зрозуміли, що це треба більше. Нам треба більше часу, тому ми в інтернеті почали шукати. Нас було багато. Наш, наша родина складалася із 12 чоловік. Це е, неповнолітні, п'ятеро неповнолітніх дітей. Всі в одній машині? Ні, 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 ні. Потім приєдналися до нас. Ми, ага. ми виїжджайте, виїжджайте. Ми, ну, ми, ми їдемо, виїжджайте, ми розуміємо, що їх треба забирати. Це моя mm-hmm. донька, її сім'я, її чоловік і двоє дітей. І це мого чоловіка, рідний брат, з онучкою. І, I, I, дозвольте, я перекладу, бо я зараз вже не забув. So, uh, they understood that this uh, asylum is just for a couple of days. They need to start looking for something better. By that time, all the family has, uh, not all, but majority of the family has... Uh, Uh, come there uh, and it was about uh, uh, 12 people uh, her daughter with her children as well uh, took a separate uh, car and uh, joined them in this asylum and they started to look for the place to stay uh, through the internet вони до нас долучилися тому що вони спочатку не хотіли їхати а потім зрозуміли що їх діти просто вищать у бомбосховищах і їх треба рятувати First of all, uh, her daughter, just like her mother, didn't want to be going, leaving the home. And uh, uh, when they understood that their children are having these psychological um, difficulties, they are just crying all the time when hiding in their uh, bomb-secured places. Uh, they understood that in order to, to save this, the psychological um, health of the children, at least, they need to leave so they joined them in this asylum in Khmelnytsk oblast Тому у Хмельницькі у Хмельницькому ми чекали поки ми всі з'єднаємося всі доїдуть і ми з'єднаємося і вирішимо що нам далі робити So we waited for our whole family to join in Khmelnytsky and then decide all together what we should do next І почали в інтернеті шукати е, того хто би нас прихистив і ми розуміємо що це на буде довгий час так на довгий час, щоб нас хтось прихистив і там, щоб ми не розлучалися, а жили якось разом. І нас Бог звів з такою гарною людиною, як Юрій Йосипович, і він нам у своєму готелі надав кімнати для того, щоб ми проживали. І ми от приїхали 28 лютого, до цих пір ми тут проживаємо. So uh, we, we were looking for a place to stay for all these 12 people, and we were understanding it should be not for a short time. By that time, the, the understanding of the situation uh, was uh, more or less clear. And thanks God, we found this noble and nice person as Yuri Yosefovich Pudlik, the, the farmer who I, talk, who I mentioned at the beginning. And he has provided rooms, not only one place, but rooms in his small hostel that he had for the workers. In, uh, and uh, since 28th of February, Uh, we've been living here. Ну, а коли ми сюди, поки ми сюди доїжджали, влаштовувалися у Новосельці, було дуже неспокійно. Спекотно, скажімо так. Це без без кінця були обстріли. So and uh, when we already were here and we were settling down in this new place to to live, uh, our village Novoselivka was severely Uh, shelled and bombed. Зараз мама скаже свої враження, 
від того, що там було. Декілька слів. My mother will share her uh, experience uh, what she felt that back then. Без перестанку mm-hmm. літали літаки, бомбили, це снаряди, це і бомби, це страхи, це і сум, і не можна було розказати, і не дай Бог нікому його і побачити. А 5, 5 березня, десь у 8 годин, може 10 хвилин вечора, ми сиділи з сусідкою, з тією, яка приєдналася до нас, з моєю свахою, ми вже були у погребі світу, не було, все, все. Угу. Е, я, до речі, я, до речі, зараз покажу, як ми ховалися в погрібі. Дуже, напевно, схожа ситуація, щоб вони зрозуміли, що це таке. Е, це, це наш, мій батьківський погріб. For you to understand, this is how the, the cell looks like. This is my, uh, those are my kids, my uh, mother and my grandmother. But very similar things everybody has um, if they have a private house. So we were hiding, and that was in Western Ukraine. But uh, Anna... She was hiding uh, at the beginning and then her mother, she stayed, by the way, her mother stayed in this uh, home after they uh, securely found a place to live with Yuri uh, in the West. And mother is saying that uh, it was terrible because all the time there were noises. It was either the low uh, uh, altitude flying uh, uh, jets or the bombs flying over us uh, or there were the explosions nearby we were sitting with this neighbor in the cell like this and uh, at the at the end even there was no light so there was no possibility uh, to to see to warm up to charge the phones or anything like that <laughs> Снаряд вибухнув, ну, думали, що це вже буде кінець. Другий раз, ну, це вже був дуже-дуже страшний вибух. Третій, четвертий, то вже нас вирвало е, двері у погреб, і нас там е, завалило у погребі. І вже, і вже горів наш будинок, бо воно е, ударило на, е, на крицьо. То ви були буквально під час удару в погребі під будинком? У погребі і двері розірвало у доль доски, і нас там завалило, що мене вже дівчата єлі витягнули з того погреба, тягали ми ті доски, і ми вже єлі вилізли і бігли на свій город. Uh, uh, the first explosion, uh, they thought it is going to be the end. Then came the second and the third explosion. And uh, the fourth explosion was the most difficult one because they uh, uh, had uh, this, uh, uh, it hit the house, the, their house, and they, uh, um, the doors of the cell uh, were turned down and uh, they were, if you can see it, back there what was happening mm-hmm. to, what's happening with the house and uh, the uh, racks from the uh, entrance to the cell uh, started falling down so uh, it blocked the way out and uh, uh, her mother it took uh, quite a while to get her out from this cell when the, when everybody started to uh, from the outside started to dig them out from there а хто, саме, а хто саме діставав? Це були сусіди просто, перехожі? Так, чи... це, це, була, це, була, це була моя сваха мамина, моя мама, мама Ані, мама. невістки моєї, це була та мама, і була сусідка. Яка... Вони просто виламали двері і витягнули маму. Вона сама звідти не вийшла, вона просто згоріла. І в цей час вже горіло весь будинок. Так. В цей Тоді. час горів вже весь будинок і сусідська хата. І наш господарська будівля. будівля, то ми вже розгрібали жарини, які горіли і попід ногами, і вже так єлі на єлі вийшли у город, і потім вже бігли у сусідський будинок моєї сестри, mm-hmm. один підвал. So uh, uh, the mother, the older lady, she was by herself in the cell by, at that moment. So the neighbor and the mother of the uh, uh, stepdaughter, uh, so, so <coughs> they came to rescue. They, the, 
house of theirs and the neighboring houses were burning so they needed to go through the fire with these uh, small uh, parts falling uh, to different sides sides burning burning uh, wrecks uh, and um, when they succeeded to get out everything was on fire so they just went into the field and ran to the next house uh, nearest house across the field uh, of their uh, it also belonged to their family it was yeah, still Якраз ми бачимо з фото, де переїжджали кореспонденти з Києва, так відомі телеведучі. Вони якраз стоять на нашому подвір'ї. So uh, ju- uh, say, say, in Ruskazo, uh, ju- just like I said, uh, this journalist, he's uh, famous uh, uh, media person, and he's standing in their yard. So everything at at the uh, back, this is their uh, yard and their um, production premise in their home house. My mama was in the house in the other but there was a lot of bombs and finally the rest was bombed in that building. So again, the situation re- re- repeated. Mother was staying in that next house uh, across the field in the cell along with, their, uh, with the people who lived there. And again, it bombed. It is the, the, the bombings destroyed that house again. І Аня знайшла волонтерів, які би могли під бомбами приїхати і вивести всіх, хто там знаходиться. So uh, her stepdaughter Anna, uh, she started to, to uh, look for the volunteers, and finally she succeeded to. to uh, so she found the people who were ready to go into that village to rescue all the citizens that left there uh, during the shellings and bombing. So during the most dangerous uh, uh, times, they uh, went to the village. Бо треба сказати, що моя мама дуже хвора жінка, яка з дитинства має захворювання серйозне серце. Це порог серця. So, uh, and my mother, uh, she has the heart problems, the chronic heart problems from, the, from her childhood. And uh, that didn't make it easier. І від того всього пережитого вона дуже була нервово, нервово стресована, і вона втратила свідомість, і волонтери її той раз не забрали. Uh, the first time when the volunteers came, uh, due to her uh, disease and, she, she, and to, due to the stress, she just got unconscious and they were not able to carry her. So the first time she left her in that house by herself. Ми, звісно, всі плакали і молили Богу для того, щоб він її якось до ранку е, оживив. Я не знаю, це треба було бути, це треба було пережити це і дуже, дуже йому довіряти Господу. The only thing that was left for us, we knew that uh, she was unconscious there uh, by herself and nobody was next to her. And we were praying God. Uh, you, you, you can't imagine how much we were relying on God, on, this, uh, on his uh, help for, to make sure that she survives till she wakes up and survives till the morning when the next volunteers come. Тому що вже приготували все для того, щоб її похоронити у городі, якщо вона помре до ранку. А якщо вона залишиться жива, то її заберуть волонтери, приїдуть. So the, the choice was is was either to to have her buried in the uh, in the garden in the morning by volunteers if she didn't make up or uh, if she wakes up uh, they will take her home so it was like death for life choice Але Господь зробив так, що нас закріпив у вірі до нього. І мама вранці проснулася і її забрали волонтери. So, but the God actually, the, the miracles happen, and our belief and uh, uh, prayers uh, were uh, re- resultative. And uh, in the, by the morning, uh, when the volunteers came, she uh, was conscious and she was able to walk. І волонтери перевезли їх знов ті, хто там всі були у погребі, у інше приміщення до знайомої у погреб. Але місце там не було всім. Тобто там тільки були діти. Молоді люди, а бабусі старі були в приміщенні. 
So again, when they were moving, the volunteers were evacuating the people. The further places where they stayed, uh, they were the nearest to uh, shellings. And actually, all Ukraine was being shelled, but they were you know, close to these hot areas. And uh, uh, of course, the evacuated people needed to stay again in these uh, in these basements, in these cells. So, uh, with all those people to, all together, there was no place for the for everyone. So they needed to make a choice. They took uh, the ch children and the women, the young, their mothers, the younger ones, to the basements, to the cells, and the older ones were staying in the houses, just uh, over the level of the un unprotected. І е, мій чоловік і брат чоловіка займався волонтерською е, допомогою. Він на своєму тому автомобілі, який у нього залишився, він заправляв за власний, власний кошт, за кошт е, волонте, в, благодійників Козової і інших знайомих. І возив гуманітарну допомогу, яку надавав і Юрій Йосипович, і громада Коз, Козової всія, вся громада збирала допомогу. І він возив під бомбами, ризикуючи своїм життям разом з своїм братом, гуманітарну допомогу військовим. So, uh, meanwhile, her husband, uh, you can see him and his brother on the picture, by this car was uh, collecting the humanitarian help, aid to the uh, military people from whole village where they, they are right now staying. The name of the village is Kozova. This is where Yuri's, the farmer's place, is located. So the uh, the farm uh, of Yuri, Yuri's farm, and all the community were collecting this, what they could, food and uh, money and so on. And uh, they were uh, uh, apply, providing him. He was uh, taking it back to the place where they came from by the car, back and forth. І ось одного разу, коли він повіз туди допомогу, то він зміг доїхати до того місця, бо там дуже бомбили, де знаходилась моя мама і її сестра, і ще одна сестри невістка, і трьохрічна дитина. І він зміг її один раз вивезти, ну, одного разу. So one of the times he was able to reach the very place where this uh, the, the older lady and uh, uh, sisters uh Anna's sister's uh, daughter in law with her three years old kid all everybody were staying in that shelter so he succeeded to make it to the shelter and bring them back after delivering of the humanitarian aid bring them back with this car Kulisa Sama Bulo It was on the twenty first of March almost in one month after the the war started. So uh, people were staying uh, 26 days uh, of their life under constant shellings and bombings. Наступного разу, коли він їздив ще раз у Чернігові, він вивіз знову мою сестру і родичів. Uh, uh, next time uh, he brought uh, her sister and her relatives. Ну, що тепер хочу сказати, що у мами в господарстві було у нас було свинка, яку ми планували 5 березня зарізати на 250 кг. Були кури, 28 курей і півник. So we had we had one swine that we were going to slaughter for the food before the Easter. We had 28 chicken. This is the, the small farm that we were uh, holding. У допоміжному приміщенні, яке розміщувалося, розумієте, ми ж робили це для себе, для мирного життя. Там у нас було шість велосипедів, це були дитячі, горні велосипеди, звичайні велосипеди, було, був мотоцикл і мопед, були, була бензокаса, була бензопила, що там ще було у нас, газонокосилка була, електропилка, бензопилка. Ну, so, тобто ми... uh, uh, they had the, all, uh, all equipment that was there. 
the uh, bicycles, the lawnmower, the uh, all the equipment that is necessary for uh, supporting this uh, small farm and this small life and. Uh, uh, it was destroyed. It was left there, and uh, so they were not able to take anything. Був стругальний станок. Була бетонна мешалка, тому що ми самі більшу частину все будували. Був міні трактор. Ми зробили, щоб обробляти городи з усім інвентарем, який садить і обробляють і збирають урожай. Було. There was a small tractor with all the uh, equipment uh, to do the tillage, the planting and uh, harvesting, uh, they were doing it themselves and also helping their neighbors uh, to do it, providing the services, so-called. So <clears throat> it was a small micro uh, farm uh, production. Були у нас для у нас же там був сад. Син дуже любив сад. Садив сад кожний рік. Він там щось насаджував. У нас були там і клубника, земляника, все, що можна, помідори я вирощувала. Я вирощувала розсаду, помідори, в перцю, картопля, всі городи на ми тільки свого городу все їли. All the food that we were having, the peppers, the potatoes, the fruit, uh, uh, tomatoes, and, and so on, everything was produced by ourselves. My son uh, is uh, very keen on uh, orchard, so he was always taking care of the or orchard. Uh, my, um, me and uh, I, I like to have a small green, greenhouse, uh, so I, not the greenhouse, I'm growing the vegetables. Mm -hmm. У нас 56 сотих городу, 108 квадратних метрів був будинок. 56 сотих, 56 hundreds of the hectare, how do you call it? It's, uh, and so uh, it, it was rather big vegetable orchard. I, I'm not sure how to translate the, this, this is the uh, acreage wise. Uh, and uh, a quite a big house for the whole family. Син у мене дуже любив рибалку. Любив дуже уикенд. Він вивозив всі свою сім'ю на уикенди на рибалку. У нього було оснащення для підводної рибалки. Also, uh, son is keen on uh, fishing, and he had even equipment for the underwater fishing. So everything was left there. Uh, Пані Анно, ви скажіть, будь ласка, по uh, зараз uh, яка ситуація uh, в селі і uh, що чекати найближчим часом? Для початку треба, як нам говорять, що ми не, не трогали поки нічого і не прибирали, бо там, ви бачите, на подвір'ї знайшли у нас гранату не розірвано. Там може uh, бути виснування. So, uh, right now, I asked, what, what are they to do right now? What are the hopes for them, uh, for the peaceful future and when they will be able to back, go back home? So, Anna is saying that uh, not, uh, they do not recommend uh, the military to go back to those places because uh, a lot of things are mined. In their yard they, they found one of the mines. So the, uh, when the soldiers retreated, they were leaving, they were mining uh, things, everything they could. And I will tell you a little later more about what terrible people so those Russians, Russian soldiers are. І просять, щоб ми утримувались від туди поїздки туди. So and uh, military say that we should not be coming. So they recommend not to go there. Uh, По-перше, нам uh, сказали, що треба зробити оцінку. Яка оцінка роз, розрушення, ну, uh, пошкодження, так? Then the first thing that we need to do is to estimate the losses. Там зараз всі комунікації розвалені, немає ні світла, ні газу. Ну, звісно, so, Її води, нема нічого. So all the uh, uh, communications or the supply of water, gas, electricity are destroyed. So no lines are uh, functioning. Для початку там треба потім, колись, коли нам дозволять, треба це все розчистити і вивезти. So the first thing will be to have it uh, cleaned, the territory cleaned down and uh, uh, utilize all those wrecks from the house and from, from the buildings. А вже потім планувати якусь роботу мирну по відновленню того, що було. 
And, and then uh, we will be starting from scratch, building back the home and uh, a huge, uh, huge forces and energy uh, resources and again financial resources will be needed to, to rebuild it. Добре, сподіваюся, що е, найгірше позаду – це саме головне. Я вам бажаю, щоб е, е, в найближчому майбутньому була можливість спокійно і безпечно повернутися. Я зараз запитаю, можливо, у когось є якісь запитання е, з наших учасників. А, Скажи, будь ласка, всім, що для початку треба перемога. Uh, I, I was uh, saying, uh, let's hope that the worst things have been uh, have passed already, and in the nearest future you will be able to go back to the peaceful village and start this work uh, with all your family. And Anna is saying, first of all, we need the victory. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, and. Uh, by the way, this uh, sorry, я не прийшов на українську. Ця фотографія зроблена в Козові, правильно? Я зараз розумію. Так, так, так. так Козові. Uh, this, this... Це громада Козової, нам uh, саме церква. Uh-huh. Та є частина Козу. А це, це, ферма, люди... це ферма Юрія Йосповича позаду, ні? Ні, ні. Це uh, не його, це інша агрофірма. Uh-huh. Uh, this photo was taken in Козова village, uh, and the silos that you see behind this is one of the farmers uh, uh, of the other farmers uh, in the area. So he's just, you see, packed the, the boxes and going and uh, uh, about to go to the east. Я, ну, так як я вам вже побажав всього найкращого, будемо підтримувати зв'язок, і зараз я розповім. Ваша історія надихнула нас на ось цей фонд, на створення цього фонду. Я не знаю, як воно далі піде. Але ми будемо робити все можливе, щоб допомогти саме ось в таких важких моментах відбудови вам та вашим, як то навіть не знати, по нещастю колегам. Тому що ну, ми, ми всі одна країна, ми однозначно повинні підтримувати один одного, як можемо. So, Роман, uh... дякую тобі саме тобі за те, що ти нас всіх зорганізував нас всіх зібрав на цю конференцію, і що ми могли донести свою інформацію у найвідальніші куточки нашої планети. Це дуже зараз е, корисно і дуже е, цінне. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was uh, starting to say that your situation and the way how we helped you with this, uh, uh, with this request of uh, Regina and uh, her friends uh, inspired us of me and my team to do uh, to start this program fundraising program world to rebuild rural ukraine and anna is saying that uh, thank you roman for uh, uh, letting me speak and tell my story to people from different continents it is very important uh, to share and uh, uh, to to let everyone understand what is really happening and maybe to look for uh, ways to, to solve this problem in the future. Да. Ми будемо продовжувати спілкуватися і підтримувати з вами зв'язок, особливо із, uh, буде, будемо сподіватися, що будемо скоро мати якісь звісточки вже не з Тернопільської області від вас, а з Чернігівської. Думаю, але але зараз ще... Що? що нас уже зовуть на роботу, що ми приїжджали. Аня, невістка моя, уже з понеділка повинна вийти на роботу. Вона працює в патрульно-постовій службі. Я, вона діловод. Я, мене викликають на роботу вже 18-го, через тиждень. Все в Чернігівській області, так? Чернігів, саме в Чернігів, саме місто. Так. So uh, I said, hopefully, hopefully the next contact we will be having with you when you are uh, back in uh, in your native um, region, in your home, and starting uh, the peaceful life from scratch. And Anna says that we already have been asked by our employers, for example, my daughter-in-law, uh, she wor- is working in the office of the police, uh, so she's been asked to come in a week, and I'm supposed to go there on the 18th. 
uh, of uh, April. So uh, our employers are already inviting us back to, to Oblast and they are starting, uh, they're going back to normal life. Ну, я сподіваю... Я працюю завідуючою в садочку, в дошкільному закладі, в садочку дитячому, завідуючою. То нам встановить звук, щоб ми наводили порядок. Anna works in the kindergarten as the head of the kindergarten, and we are invited back to start uh, uh, cleaning everything and preparing for the for the peaceful life. Yeah, uh, I, I I hope that it will never get back to this area, just like it happened twice already in the history. Кажу, дуже сподіваюся, що більше таких повторів історії витків не буде у вашому. Будемо надіяти. До вашому, ваших місцях. Дякуємо вам. Велике дякуємо. Немає за що. На здоров'я, як то кажуть, а нехай Бог береже. Навзаєм. Нас усі, хай береже Господь і миру нам всі. І гарних нам новин. Підтримую на 100%. Мада uh, said, uh, thank you very much for your support. And I said, uh, may it be for the good, for the health. And Anna says, uh, may God save all of us. Uh, тож я буду тоді розказувати про, про те, що в нас зараз виросло в плані проєкту, які є uh, новини. І, uh, напевно, немає там пана Юрія. Якщо пан Юрій зможе приєднатися, то було б дуже добре, щоб він розказав mm-hmm. ситуацію саме з аграрної точки зору, щоб е, поділився. Е, Юрія нема зараз, так? Да? Нас зараз нема. Може, він там у себе, в офісі? Так, да, йому писав. Ну, тоді, значить, можливо, приєднається. Е, дякую ще раз вам за вашу історію. Е, Будемо будем на зв'язку. Е, so, we have, uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, created a new project that will be uh, for the sake to help the people uh, that who lost their homes. This project uh, is going, it was first time uh, announced during our uh, conference that started in uh, uh, like three, four days ago, uh, and uh, we will be proceeding uh, spreading the word. Uh, the idea of the project is first of all to raise the money and to help rebuild the homes. This is the number one thing. Secondly, it is the uh, uh, production premises and the equipment and also the farm animals of the village people in Ukraine. Uh, so this is the web page. You probably received it, but uh, uh, we have put all this story and all the uh, scenario how we helped Uh, this family were able to help this family a little bit thanks to their uh, donations from Germany. Uh, we want to have all the world involved uh, to do this, uh, to make this project uh, possible. Uh, <clears throat> there is some information about it, then comes the actual uh, here. Uh, yeah, by the way. Every village citizen in Ukraine is growing something. And here is some statistics of how much in total production we uh, Ukrainian village citizens are producing. Then comes uh, the actual structure. So what will be spend, what will be number one stage, number two? Okay, I just want to hide this. Okay. <clears throat> So four stages of aid. Uh, this is this is our team who will be involved um, in this in this project. By the way, along with us is uh, Rupert Lindelmeyer. He's been to Ukraine, and uh, I'm staying at his farm right now. Here comes the in- information how this project will work and criteria. We want it to be objective, so we will be providing the actual. Uh, building materials or construction materials or rebuilding the homes. It's not about the money. We started with this, the, the cash, the money, and uh, in the future, we want it to be more um, substantial and more uh, like um, final. So when something is restored, 
whether it is home, whether it is greenhouse, whether it is a small um, uh, tractor or something like that. Uh, then comes the actual board of ambassadors. So we have support from very respected, respected people in North America uh, who will be our board uh, of those who are making decisions, who are influencing on the decisions, how the money are, is being uh, spent and distributed between the, uh, the people. I will be uh, traveling to, uh, with my family to uh, the North America and we will be staying uh, uh, in each state uh, making visits and presentations of this project. So probably in the future I might be contacting you. Uh, as of the uh, situation right now in Ukraine, uh, you know that uh, we have uh, small uh, easing of this war uh, because from the north and a little bit from the northeast the troops the Russian troops have been uh, retreated back to Belarus and Russia however everyone especially uh, in the eastern Ukraine are saying that there is going to be and especially the intelligence of the United States and uh, Great Britain they are saying that there is going to be a second uh, attempt to uh, conquer Ukraine. They are not. Uh, they have lost huge amounts of people, according to Ukrainian statistics, about nineteen thousand of soldiers, and uh, huge amounts of those uh, equipment. But they are not going to stop, and they will be trying to get at least something for this victory date, ninth of May. This, the reason why I'm saying victory in the quotes because it has never been a victory for Ukraine. We had uh, the victory in the World War II. Uh, back then we had the uh, losses of uh, people uh, in that war, tremendous numbers. So it was uh, a peer of victory, like the uh, legendary, when both armies lost all their soldiers and there were no one left to celebrate the victory. That's why, and Russia is going, uh, they are praising uh, this uh, victory in the World War II and they want to have some results in, uh, uh, in war with Ukraine to show to their uh, stupid people who believe, who still believe that uh, they are doing something good for for someone. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be very um, selective in the words, but uh, the emotions go much further. They, they are uh, raping children, they are mining uh, the fields with the state-of-the-art distant mining system fields what the what the purpose of mining the fields they are destroying the um, infrastructure they are destroying the homes of civil people they are bombing the schools there uh, for example in mariupol all the city is destroyed there is not a, a building which wasn't hit with the uh, uh, bomb just about an hour or maybe two hours before uh, we started this session um, we uh, there was a news that uh, they bombed uh, a railroad railway station uh, in eastern ukraine and there were a lot of people waiting there for evacuation so another couple of dozens of people including children died uh, a lot of horrible things uh, you you are seeing on the news, and unfortunately, those are right. I wish it would be some uh, like Russians are saying on their uh, TVs, uh, some uh, scenes played with actors, but that's not true. This is this is real, and this is going on in Ukraine right now, in the center, in the geographic center of of Europe. Uh, so uh, on. What, what we can do, uh, this is what we are doing right now. All the commercial projects have been postponed for our team and we are going to devote all our attention to this World to Rebuild Rural Ukraine project. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to send the link right now to the chat box. Please share it with anyone. Uh, I, we would be we will be very grateful to you if you can do it. And uh, uh, I will be personally doing these sessions like right now every uh, 14 days. So every second week on Friday at 8 a.m. according to Chicago time at 3 p.m. At, at 15 hours according to Berlin time. Uh, we will be doing this session to tell the situation, first of all, in the world. Uh, in, in Ukraine with the war, secondly, in Ukrainian agriculture, and thirdly, what is going on with the project and how much we have already uh, uh, collected and how much we have done to help people. This project is a long-lasting one because uh, it's not about purchasing <clears throat> some uh, armored uh, uh, bulletproof vests or uh, caskets, which is very important, but it is quick, it can be quickly done. Rebuild, whereas rebuilding the houses and allowing people to uh, have the most important things to start their life from scratch, it will take months. So uh, we will proceed with this project as long as there will be a need for it. Uh, <clears throat> it, it so the link uh, to this video is uh, going to be to every uh, second week's video is going to be on our page and uh, now i would like to tell a few words about the agriculture uh, about two weeks ago the reuters magazine contacted me and they were asking questions uh, about the season back then the, it wasn't uh, clear what maybe even three weeks ago it wasn't that clear how the season would start, but right now we are understanding that everybody in the Western Ukraine, a uh, majority of the farmers in the Central Ukraine, and let me turn back the uh, map, and uh, those who can in the Eastern Ukraine and Southern Ukraine are actually planting. They are doing their best to plant. So here is the map. I will show you. Uh, to plant what they can. Uh, their crops that they've been planning to plant have changed due to the inability to get uh, the uh, inputs, the seeds and um, some uh, and uh, uh, oil, the, the gas. By the way, uh, this is the second industry by the importance who are required to get, uh, who need to get the uh, fuel. Okay, I will try this map. Maybe it will be faster. Mm. Ah, something is wrong. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so here is the map. Just a second. <clears throat> yeah, uh, the the first crops that suffered most because they were grow they are grown in the uh, less precipitated areas, uh, and those areas were uh, occupied first of all. That's the Chernihiv, Sumy, Kharkiv, uh, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson Oblast. Those are the small grains, the sunflowers, and the potato. So uh, right now, even in Germany, we see that there is a lack uh, of uh, oil, of sunflower oil, uh, of the vegetable oil, for the reason that Ukraine is not able to export. Uh, before the war, Ukraine was able uh, was exporting about 5 million metric tons through the ports in the south. Right now, all those ports are uh, blocked with Russian forces and uh, they have even mined the sea, claiming that Ukrainians did it. But somehow they knew when they were making this announcement to the media, uh, Russian uh, so, uh, captain, he said uh, that uh, he, he mentioned the exact number of the mines. How would you know, I wonder. 
<clears throat> so right now the only option for all the storages and by the way the farmers in ukraine they have uh learned that the best way is to store the uh, commodities till later in the season in their farm. So majority of the crops that have been harvested last year are staying still in those silos that you saw, for example, on the photograph. And uh, in order to uh, get some money for the farmers, for the planting, they need to start selling. The traders are not able to take it through the ports. That is why they are sending it, uh, all the produce, through the border on the west by the railroad. But there are a number of difficulties here. The uh, capacity of the railroad is maximum, maximum 0.7 million of tons per month. Can you compare 5 million to 0.7? That's number one issue. Number two issue, the size of the rails is different in Europe and in Ukraine. Unfortunately, we still have the Soviet standard or Russian standard, which is a little bit bigger. And uh, this slows down the process of passing through the border. Although, for example, uh, Romania uh, and Moldova, they, uh, they are close to the ports here. Uh, they have freed all the experts, all the paperwork and the uh, trains can go quickly through uh, the border. Uh, however, there is still this thing to change the wheels. Also, there is another point uh, <clears throat> that a lot of the train cars, they are uh, busy with supplying the army and evacuating the people. Uh, the ports in Europe, they have not been expecting all that volume of the commodities from Ukraine. So they are already filled up with European commodities and they need to have uh, some to make some space for Ukrainian ones to go out because majority of Ukrainian commodities, about 80 percent, 80, were exported through the ports through, by the sea. As for the uh, farms, there are a lot of uh, terrible stories, for example, in Kharkiv. Uh, there was a farm uh, with a couple of dozens, uh, uh, hundreds, I'm sorry, hundreds of cows, uh, good breeds for milking. This is what this was a developed uh, high end farm uh, and uh, rushes came, they destroyed the barns and they just shot all the almost all the cows. Why? Nobody knows. Just like the pictures you saw with people in the uh, in the town of Bucha buried all together in in one place the same thing was there with cows they are stealing the combines you probably have seen the on the news that the uh, co uh, the tractor uh, from the dealer of John Deere in Donetsk Oblast it was stolen and uh, the GPS tracker showed that it is, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly where, but somewhere in uh, uh, in Russia. So it was delivered there. Uh, <clears throat> they're stealing the uh, oil, the um, uh, gas, the fuel. They are destroying the, uh, so the, there was a picture uh, when they came into the village and uh, the same like Anna's, uh, family, they had some storages of small grains for their, uh, for their animals. Uh, so those bastards, they have killed all the animals. And then just for fun or for the sake of, I don't know why, they uh, took all those sacks with uh, small uh, grains and they turned them and uh, threw to the uh, outside to the street. What's the point? They want to create as much damage as possible including the farmers. Uh, for example, in here where the Militopol is, there is a huge uh, company, corporation, a harvest. Uh, they are producing milk and small grains. I don't remember the actual acreage, but uh, there is a farm, a dairy farm next to Mar Mariupol. Mariupol. Uh, it is over here, I'm sorry, this is it. And uh, they are milking the cows, but not able to deliver that milk into the city. 
very close from them because the city uh, is uh, blocked by rushes and uh, no food, no water, nothing is can penetrate the city. And uh, this milk instead is being poured into the field because the cows, they need to be milked, but it cannot be used anywhere. Uh, it cannot be delivered anywhere. A lot of stories like that we can tell, but uh, the optimistic thing is that the farmers, the Ukrainian farmers, they are continuing to work. We had this conference three days uh, this week, and I was I was worried that there might be no participants from Ukraine due to the fact that it's not good time. Uh, it's not the right time to do any any things like that. But we we had a lot of Ukrainians, dozens of Ukrainians have joined, joined and more will uh, were asking, were getting registered and asking for the video materials afterward. This is a positive sign and it means that they are really working. For example, one of our team, Denis uh, Serehienko of Terrorized Team, he is also a farmer. So uh, first he went to the army, second, uh, right now he is working in the field, the second battlefield, so to say. Uh, his planting. So uh, wh wherever they can plant, they are planting. And uh, hopefully soon uh, they will be able to deliver the produce to the world, uh, not through the railroad, but through the usual um, usual way. So uh, right now for today, that will be it. Um, this is just a start. So once again, I want to uh, ask you if possible, to spread, uh, I'm sorry, this is the wrong link, to spread the word about uh, this program. Uh, I will be arriving to Chicago on the 20th of April and I will start my tour uh, from Chicago in support of this program and <clears throat> will be regularly informing everyone who is willing to know how it's going on uh, and what are the news from Ukraine and from Ukrainian fields every second uh, week so uh, in two weeks from now in 14 days from now uh, we will have the second session uh, and we will tell uh, more about what's the situation in ukraine in ukrainian agriculture and um, uh, how we are, are working on the world to rebuild rural ukraine pro uh, project thank you for your support everyone who supported our first attempt uh, actually it was your initiative uh, with this uh, money and uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, create more of the positive stories. If you have questions, please ask right now or we will be then wishing you good day and we will communicate with you through emails. Mm -hmm. Okay, then have a nice evening and... Uh, hey, Roman. Yes, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Just curious that I, 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 you know, sent you a chat message or question, but um, based on your conversation with the Ukraine producers, mm -hmm. any, any, any feel for what percentage of your spring planted crops do you anticipate will actually get planted? Actually, so that's a tough question, but it is not a tough question. The answer is going to be tough. Uh, according to one of the experts, and this was the last interview with Reuters that I held, uh, I invited an expert from the Ukrainian Agricultural Ministry from Kirovograd Oblast in the middle of Ukraine, the, the most fertile soils. Uh, so he said that up to 45% of spring crops might not be planted this year spring crops up to 45 of percent of hectares where the spring crops were supposed to be okay and uh, you know I'm, uh, I'm assuming part of that's you know there's a number of different things right fuel availability infrastructure damage um availability of workforce um what percentage i mean what what how much of that would you say is just due to the damage or the you know the of the bombardments uh bombardments and the in inability to enter the field i would estimate about 20 to 30 percent okay 
but uh, but that's that's my my number which I was collecting from uh, opinions of different people and I'm not I cannot uh, guarantee that this this but actually no one can guarantee anything right now it is still going on and we are expecting a huge uh, attack uh, from the east and uh, for example if we are talking about Dnipropetrovsk oblast uh, let me show you the the map once again uh, uh, oh, here it is. The very good map, by the way. <clears throat> so, uh, the oblast of Chernihiv, Sumy, Kharkiv, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Kherson are occupied, unfortunately. But we have such oblasts as, for example, Mykolaiv oblast, Dnipropetrovsk oblast, Poltava oblast, uh, Cherkass oblast, these are the center of the Ukrainian agriculture. They have huge fields with very fertile soil and a lot of farmers. If the bastards do not go further than the east, these farmers will be able to do their job very well. But if, and I, I, I pray that it's not going to be the case, if they penetrate into these oblasts, that is going to be a world uh, food disaster because uh, even if Ukraine is able to supply enough for itself, the, uh, first of all, it will mean that the ports will not open. Secondly, uh, the possibility to plant here will not be able and even to harvest and to, to do anything in the field. And those are huge amounts of hectares over here. Of course, all the Ukraine is agricultural, but this is, uh, like I said, this is the center of the fertile soils in Ukraine. So uh, we, we do not know at this moment what is going to happen, but uh, uh, potato, for example, is grown here and in Kherson and also in Injitome. So uh, about two thirds of the areas where it is grown are not not able to uh, produce potato. Uh, sunflower in all those uh, oblasts is the number one crop. We are hoping for the winter crops, uh, winter wheat that has been planted. And uh, uh, yeah, by the way, one more difficult issue with winter crops. Uh, fields have been mined. And a lot of the fields in these regions, they right now uh, are still having the mines there. And if you go today, you can see the danger because it is still almost bare land. Maybe not that much, but still not, not, not much of the growth. But once it grows higher than the wheat and the winter crops, it closes the danger. So no one can see that. It is another risk for the farmers to go into the fields and uh, uh, do the sprayings or harvest. It was two weeks ago we had this video from Dnipropetrovsk Oblast where the uh, tractor uh, got exploded on the mine. They were starting to do the uh, spring uh, fertilization. It simply exploded. Thanks God the driver, he survived the farmer. So, yeah, these, these, these are the realities. Okay. One other quick question, and then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll get out of your... No, no, no please. Um, the um, port last weekend, um, not that I rely on Twitter, anybody, some people do, I don't, but there was a gentleman on Twitter that was talking about the Odessa um, port infrastructure being damaged by uh, Russian bombardment. I mean... I haven't gotten confirmation on that, but is there, I mean, the Russians so far have, I mean, I, I've heard there's been some infrastructure damage to some of the port facilities, um, but is there, has there been any additional, I mean, it, it strikes me that, you know, earlier you had mentioned the Russian soldiers going through some of these um, towns and, and effectively just, you know, uh, they're, they're destroying stealing grain. It, I mean, obviously, it's just ridiculous. But I, I'm surprised then that they haven't done more efforts to destroy 
the uh, you know more of the port infrastructure, um, and maybe their ultimate plan is to someday you know make that a part of their you know uh, their it, takeover. Or, It makes it makes a lot of sense. Although uh, recently it is very hard to find any sense in what they are doing. Uh, um, we in Ukraine we do not have much official information about the uh, damages to the cities. At the beginning, the news were coming very quickly, but as our forces um, analyzed the situation, they understood that providing this information that, for example, a missile at uh, two o'clock p.m. hit uh, Lutsk oil uh, storage, uh, like fuel storage, it was working not for the sake, for the better of the Ukraine. So they are uh, keeping that information as much as possible in, in the secret. I have heard also that there were serious shellings in Odessa. And <clears throat> Probably uh, the the first thing to attack would be the closer to the sea uh, regions uh, because they number of times they were trying to um, come from the ships uh, from the ship uh, to to Odessa to to have these soldiers coming through the from the sea. It would make sense that they would want to free uh, a path for themselves, but. Um, As far as I know, in Mykolaiv, uh, even in Mariupol, which the city is destroyed totally, the ports are still there, still standing. So um, it, it makes sense uh, to say that they are considering, they do not want to be spending any additional uh, money to rebuild this critically impo important uh, infrastructural objects so they are not bombing it they are bombing just the people the, the civilians and uh, it's true they've been created uh, first of all they destroyed the military bases they were targeting military bases with their um, airdromes air, air, airports and uh, secondly they started uh, to destroy their people's homes and the uh, clinics, hospitals, uh, and uh, now it seems to me they are shelling everything they can. So it, it, do it doesn't um, look like they have a strict plan. Okay, appreciate it. No problem, you, you are welcome. And uh, as, as always, we will be informing and uh, we will be sending out emails uh, on the news. Hopefully soon the news will be better, and we, but there is going to be a huge amount of work to be done after, after it is over, when it is over. Thank you very much for your time. Please spread the word about what we are doing, and hopefully uh, we will be able to protect the democracy in the world, Ukrainian uh, land, Ukrainian people, and uh, the... Actually, we are fighting for what is right. So the good thing must win. <laughs>